Assalamualaikum dear students welcome to the online lecture on nonlinear uh, control systems today we are going to discuss nonlinear observers um, so why do we need nonlinear observers uh, the reason is that uh, uh, so far we have discussed the controllers uh, like backstepping sliding mode control and uh, sontag control all of which require the full state feedback but full state feedback in practical situations might not be uh, very easy sometimes some variables some of the state variables are uh, very expensive to measure and for some variables there may not be even uh, the, the appropriate sensors may not be available in the market so uh, there there could also be noise in the sensors so observers can also help in uh, such scenarios uh, state observers can estimate full state vector using the values of the subset of state variables. Uh, just need enough sensors to make the system observable. Uh, so what, what we will be doing is that we will be measuring a subset of states and based on the subset of states we will be estimating the full state vector uh, using of course the uh, observability property of the system. Okay, so in general what do we have is we have the output of the system is y is equal to cx or some nonlinear function of x plus some noise so here in this case y would be a p cross 1 vector where p is less than the size of the state the state itself would be n cross 1 vector uh, c would be p cross n matrix and uh, x is the n cross 1 state variable which, which has larger size usually than the output and then v could be the process noise or uh, sorry not process noise it would be the measurement noise for the sensor uh, process noise is the term that we will be using for another another kind of noise in the later slides so observer based controller uh, well first of all look at the normal controller so what happens is that we have a desired value of the state vector and then we have the output of the system where in this case we have full state feedback where output is just equal to the full state vector and then we uh, we give the controller the difference between the actual state vector and the desired value of the state vector and apply usually some gain and it controls the plant and we try to achieve the state value that is equal to the desirable value of the state so this is full state feedback controller so we measure all the states and we design the controller something like uh, a, some gain times the difference between the state value and this is the dynamic controller where your output is not all of the states but a subset of states you give that subset to the observer and you also give the information of the input you apply to the system to the observer this information is easy because this in uh, the in input you are calculating uh, yourself so it's easy to give it to the observer uh, and then you the observer gives the estimated state and the difference between the estimated state and the desired value of the actual state is given to the controller and based on that controller tries to uh, make this uh, the the actual state of the plant equal to its desired desirable value so this can only happen when this x hat estimate is um, accurate enough or or at least it becomes accurate with the passage of time so we measure a subset of uh, x uh, some of the states we design the controller based on the estimate of the state not the state actual state itself and we try to achieve that the estimate of the state approaches the actual value of the state as the time uh, goes on uh, using the output and the input information so this is the situation of uh, observers and observer based controllers um, so one more remark that usually in uh, these days you write the uh, you have microcontrollers and microprocessors the so the code of the controller and the observer is written in the same uh, microcontroller or in the same device usually so it is easy to implement uh, observer and controller you do not need uh, as a special hardware piece specifically for the observer 
same hardware that you use for this type of system uh, can be used for this type of system even for this type of system the amount of hardware requirement is less because you are using less amount of sensors and here the amount of sensors is more but of course there is a price to be paid for uh, using lesser amount of sensors the accuracy of observer based system is the performance of observer based system is uh, you know comparably it's not too bad but but it's you know lesser than the performance of this system which uses more sensors and the sensors are uh, considered to be ideal okay so uh, we review the linear observers uh, a little bit and uh, we see that we have Lewin-Berger observer in linear systems that uh, you might have studied in your linear systems class uh, so uh, what is underneath the Lewin-Berger observer we assume a linear system x dot equal ax plus bu it might have some process noise but usually in Lewin-Berger observer we ignore this noise or assume that it's not there and measurement y is equal to cx and there could be some measurement noise but for this observer does not cater for this this noise so we choose the observer dynamics as x hat dot so this is the copy of the system dynamics the process dynamics ax plus bu uh, this, this is a copy of the dynamics plus the correction term so this correction term is this observer gain observer gain times the difference between the actual output of the system and the predicted output of the system that is based on the state estimates so this is a very smart uh, design because it uh, basically uh, it it depicts uh, the accuracy of the estimate based on the uh, difference between the predicted output based on the estimate and the actual output that we get from the sensors so then the error dynamics when you uh, employ this observer then the difference between the actual and the uh, estimated state the dynamics uh, the difference between the dynamics of the actual and the estimated state this you can subtract this equation from this equation and then you will get this so this will be a minus lc into error error is basically x minus x hat which is the difference between the actual and the estimated state and then you have um, these extra terms um, where you know if you ignore the measurement noise and the process noise these two terms will go away and we will just have error dynamics a minus lc into error and that's what we do we ignore w and v and then we can pl uh, place the eigenvalues of a minus lc arbitrarily using the observer gain if ac is observable so if we place the eigenvalues in the open left half plane then the error goes to zero as time goes to infinity and when error goes to zero then the estimate goes to x because error is the difference between estimate estimated state and the actual state so when the error is zero then it means that estimated state is equal to actual state so this is Lewin-Berger observer simple design does not cater for process and measurement noise and then we have Kalman filter for linear systems so we again have the same system with process noise and measurement noise uh, and we choose this time the observer dynamics are very similar the copy of the system dynamics ax plus bu and then the same thing uh, the the correction term based on the output actual output and the estimated output or predicted output based on the state estimate but the but the design of the observer gain is different in this case so the design of the observer gain in this case is that observer is equal to some matrix p times c transpose into some matrix r inverse so there p is the solution of algebraic riccati equation uh, because we are looking at the infinite horizon kalman filter the the uh, stationary uh, observer uh, for for finite horizon Kalman filter the this P would be the solution of algebraic uh, differential Riccati equation so we are not going to discuss the differential Riccati equation here uh, so the algebraic Riccati equation is A times P plus P times A transpose plus Q minus P C transpose R inverse C P is equal to zero 
so <coughs> so in this riccati equation we have q and r which are the covariance matrices of uh, the process noise and the measurement noise uh, note that we assume that the process noise and the measurement noise are uh, uh, gaussian with zero mean and some uh, covariances q and r and they are also assumed to be mutually uncorrelated and uncorrelated with the state vector so there are some assumptions on uh, the properties of uh, the process and the measurement noise that you can find in any standard textbook uh, so uh, the summary is that we find the gain by solving algebraic riccati equation and there are theorems which prove that if you find the gain using this uh, formula using this method then it is guaranteed that this the state estimate will asymptotically converge to the actual state vector regardless of the presence of process and measurement noise so uh, kalman filter is basically a stochastic filter because uh, it uh, caters for the uncertain uh, process and measurement noise uh, given that you know at least something about these noises at least you know their covariance matrices they are uncertain but their uncertainty is uh, uh, slightly known to us the the kind of uncertainty is known should be known to us otherwise the kalman filter would not work okay so now we come to the nonlinear observers um uh, first of all the there is very easy extension of the kalman filter if you have a nonlinear system x dot equal f of x plus g of x times u y is equal to h of x where f of x is and g of x and h of x could be nonlinear functions of x then you can use the standard linear kalman filter that we just discussed in the previous slide uh, by defining a to be equal to partial f by partial x b equal g of x for single input single output systems and uh, c equal partial h by partial x and with x uh, you uh, when you find these derivatives you place the actual current value of x in the matrices this will be jacobian matrix so this will also be some sort of if h is scalar then this will be a vector otherwise this will be a matrix uh, then you can uh, plug in the current value of x into these matrices and then these will become constant uh, matrices uh, and then you can find the uh, uh, observer gain by solving the algebraic riccati equation and that observer uh, would work locally on this nonlinear system okay so justification for this extended kalman filter is that the nonlinearities are treated as process noise so uh, here uh, you know there is a difference between the, the linear this, this linearization is basically approximation of this nonlinear system uh, the differences or the errors in the approximation of the original system are treated as process noise so that's uh, how the observer works but uh, i just i should mention here that uh, mm, uh, the convergence in case of kalman filter is guaranteed but there are no guarantees in case of extended kalman filter it works most of the time but uh, there is no guarantee that it will always work similarly there is another uh, thaus observer uh, and for that let us assume that we have a, a nonlinear system where there is a linear part so x dot equal ax ax is the linear time invariant part of the nonlinear system then there is nonlinear part g of t y u this nonlinear part only depends upon the output and the input so we can uh, basically having this as a separate part is that um, the intuition is that we can cancel out this part this is the known part to us and this is in general unknown uh, um, by unknown i mean that f of x is a function of full state uh, where some of the variables may not be part of the output and then y is equal to cx if you have a nonlinear system of this type then you can and and you further assume that there is no process or measurement noise and the nonlinearity f depends upon x only there, there is no u in this nonlinearity uh, so choose the observer dynamics as 
uh, x hat dot equal ax plus uh, this copy of this dynamics so this is basically the copy of the dynamics copy of these dynamics plus the uh, correction term so this is what we have seen in common for all the observer dynamics whether linear or non-linear uh, the intuition is that the dynamics of the observer is the copy of the dynamics of the original system plus some correction term which is based on the uh, actual output and the predicted output based on the state estimates so the resulting error dynamics would become something like this uh, the error uh, derivative would be a minus lc into error plus f of x minus f of x hat and there is a theorem uh, which states that if ac is observable and f is globally lipschitz with lipschitz constant gamma then the error will go to zero as t goes to infinity provided that the Lipschitz constant of this uh, nonlinearity f is less than the minimum eigenvalue of a matrix q divided by twice the maximum eigenvalue of another matrix p and what are these q and p matrices? q and p are positive definite matrices satisfying the Lyapunov equation so this is uh, a version of a Lyapunov equation a minus lc transpose p plus p times a minus lc is equal to minus q so if you can find p and q matrices uh, in such a way that you know uh, this condition is satisfied uh, then uh, the observer gain that ensures this condition so in order to find the p and q so usually what how we do it is that we define q is equal to identity matrix uh, as we often do by, while solving the Lyapunov equation we define Q as the identity matrix and we find P in terms of this observer gain L and we select the value of L such that this condition is satisfied in the selection of P so this is how you design the Tau's observer and then uh, now we are basically ready to look at some examples so first of all let's consider a nonlinear system where x x1 dot equal x2 plus x1 times x2 and x2 dot equal 1 plus x1 square times u and then the output is just x1 so we first of all we design the extended Kalman filter for this uh, system and uh, we see that f of x equal uh, so in this case if you uh, try to uh, relate the f of x g of x so the if you recall that for extended Kalman filter the underlying nonlinear system is x dot equal f of x plus g of x times u and y is equal to h of x so f of x in this case would be in x1 dot there is uh, the terms that do not involve the control input uh, are part of f of x here there is x2 plus x1 x2 and in x2 dot there is no term which is uh, independent of u so there will be zero and similarly in x1 dot there is no term involving the control input u so this uh, part will be zero and the uh, term involving u would be uh, 1 plus x1 square in the second element of g of x and h of x is simply x1 so we can find the a b c matrices a matrix is partial f by partial x which would be x2 so if you take the partial derivative of this term with respect to x1 it will be x2 if you take the partial derivative of this term with respect to x2 it will be 1 plus x1 and then this term is 0 so its partial derivatives with respect to x1 and x2 will be 0 and 0 b would be simply gx and we can replace the uh, g of x with the uh, current value of x and then it will become a constant and similarly g of x would be 0 and 1 plus x1 square c is partial h by partial x so if you take the derivative of x1 with respect to x1 it will be 1 and with respect to x2 it will be 0 all right so in the neighborhood of the origin uh, so we just look at this nonlinear system around the origin point so in the neighborhood of the origin if you plug in the values of uh, x1 and x2 then a matrix becomes 0 1 0 0 c matrix becomes 1 0 
and you can verify that this is the uh, this AC pair is actually observable C and AC would be a matrix with rank uh, 2 and then I just copy the system onto the next slide and we have so far we have uh, in the neighborhood of the origin we have A and C be the observable pair so we can define we can basically design the Kalman filter now we have to assume some properties of the process noise and the measurement noise usually it is done in practice you do it by understanding the system by by your experience of the practical system for which you are designing the observer sometimes you also have to do hit and trial by for finding the uh, realistic values of uh, q and r here we just for the sake of this example we assume that uh, the process the covariance matrix of the process noise is identity matrix and the covariance of measurement noise is 0.5 so the observer gain would be p times c transpose times r inverse and the riccati equation would be um, a times p plus p times a transpose plus uh, this q minus uh, this whole thing so uh, when we solve this equation uh, when we multiply and add each other out this will become like this so we can we this will give us four equations so this first component is equal to zero the second component is also equal to zero third component equal to zero fourth component equal to zero so four equations and there will be three unknowns p is usually symmetric and positive definite so uh, so here this will give us p2 equal 1 over square root of 2 p1 equal 1.098 and p3 equal 1.55 when you solve these four equations for the three unknowns and that will give you the observer gains so this is the observer gain using the extended kalman filter approach so this observer can be now used for estimating the states of the nonlinear system this nonlinear system okay so this was the example now look at uh, another example so consider another nonlinear system x1 dot equal x2 plus 0 0.2 sine of x1 x2 dot equal 1 plus x1 square into u and y is equal to x1 so we want to now design the thaus observer for this system so in this system you can see that uh, for thaus observer the system dynamics are x dot equal ax plus uh, g t g of t y u and plus f of x so if you uh, look into this uh, system the linear part of the system is x2 in the x1 dot and no linear part uh, with respect to states in the x2 dot so a matrix will be 0 1 0 0 and then there is uh, any function there is no function which is uh, um, a function of a u and output in the x1 dot but there is a function of u in the x2 dot so that will be counted as g of t comma y comma u and then f of x will be the nonlinearity so there is a nonlinearity sorry this is written as x1 x2 but nonlinearity is actually 0 0.2 sine of x1 so f of x will be 0 0.2 sine of x1 that will appear here and 0 will appear here so uh, partial f by partial x that will be uh, that is written correctly now so this expression of f, f of x is wrong uh, but this expression is correct so if you take the derivative of 0 0.2 sine of x1 that will be 0 0.2 cos of x1 and if you take the derivative with respect to x2 it will be 0 and if you take the derivative of 0 with respect to x1 and x2 that will be still 0 so the norm of this matrix would be less than or equal to 0 0.2 which gives us the um, condition that uh, we need for the thaus observer so 0 0.2 which is the uh, bound on the derivative of the f of f, f of x function uh, you already know that the bound on the derivative of uh, a function is uh, the lipschitz constant so this is the uh, global Lipschitz constant for f of x 
so this global Lipschitz constant should be less than uh, lambda min of q divided by 2 times lambda max of p here we select q to be equal to identity matrix and solve the Lyapunov equation uh, to ensure that this bound is satisfied uh, and then we will be uh, we will be uh, sure that the observer gain that we found is going to uh, result in the asymptotically uh, converging estimates which will converge to the actual state so here the lambda max of this condition is translated into lambda max of p less than 5 by 2 5 by 2 is 2.5 so we copy the dynamics of the system onto the next slide and we have a c q and uh, the observer gain we need, still need to find and we need to find the observer gain such that this equation is satisfied and this condition lambda max of p is less than 5 by 2 is satisfied so we plug in all the things into the Lyapunov equation and we get this equation and then when we uh, do component by component comparison of the left and right hand side then we get uh, minus 2 times p1 l1 plus p2 l2 equal minus 1 p1 minus p2 l1 minus l2 p3 equals 0 and this equation is the same as uh, the other equation so two of the equations are same so you uh, so we have three equations and three unknowns in this case so we solve these uh, equations uh, and we get p2 equal minus 1 by 2 p1 equal 1 over 2 l1 into 1 plus l2 and uh, notice that the solution is in terms of the observer gains so now we need to select these observer gains such that p1 p2 p, uh, p2 is already uh, done it does not depend upon any observer gain so it will stay the same but p1 and p3 we can select so that the eigenvalues of the p matrix are such that the largest eigenvalue is less than 5 by 2 so we can uh, do this uh, in many ways so one of the way i did that is just by you know simple guessing i put uh, l1 equal 3 and l2 equal 1 and this give me p matrix of this sort if you plug in the value of l1 and l2 in these equations you get the p matrix this is p1 this is p2 p2 again and this is p3 and you can calculate the eigenvalues so the largest eigenvalue would be 1.98 and 1.98 is less than 2.5 so we have the observer so what is our observer so observer has the uh, the observer dynamics with the observer gain l1 equal 3 and l2 equal 1 so this is our Thau's observer for this example. So uh, in the end, I just want to present uh, the uh, dynamic compensator uh, because we have looked at two nonlinear observers in this case, and uh, we just uh, in order before we conclude, we just uh, need to look at the practical implementation of the. Um, it's not a practical implementation but simulation based implementation of the uh, of the observer okay so we have this system we just looked at it and we have designed the observer for this system but let us try to design uh, some simple controller for this system so that we can you know uh, have our observer based controller so linearize this system about the origin and the linearization will become this the nonlinear parts will go away and this is the linearization for this linearization we can have a simple uh, controller uh, with the, the gain k3 and 2 so this and we can also have a desirable value for the states so we, the overall controller will be k times x desired minus the estimate of the x this estimate is going to come from the Thau's observer and uh, this controller is we are going to use this controller on the nonlinear system and this controller is based on the estimate state estimates so this is a dynamic compensator so this is the diagram we have a controller we have a plant which measures only x1 so we give x1 to the observer and also the input of uh, the system and the observer gives us the x hat which includes both x1 and x2 so it includes x1 hat and x2 hat notice that we only give x1 to the observer and we get x1 hat and x2 hat out of the observer 
so this is the result uh, I gave some initial conditions and I simulated the dynamics so you can see that uh, the x1 state is in blue color and the estimate of the x1 state is in red color so they initially I gave them different initial conditions but with the passage of time these two states converge onto each other and the state estimate estimation error goes to zero so this means that our observer is working similarly uh, this x2 estimate and x2 x2 is green and x2 estimate is cyan so these uh, cyan color starts from minus 1 and the green color starts from minus 2 so initial conditions are different but eventually after some um, dynamics or transients uh, both of these converge to each other so state estimation error goes to 0 and uh, but you can also see here that everything is good but there is some steady state error so the steady state values of the states uh, are uh, so we wanted x1 steady state value to be 1 and x2 steady state value to be 2 but here you can see that x1 steady state value is around 2.5 and x2 steady state value is negative so it may be negative 0.1 or negative 0.2 so steady state error can be removed by a better controller so you can in introduce integral controller and then uh, you can uh, remove the steady state error but that is beyond the scope of this lecture and uh, that is all I wanted to discuss about the nonlinear observers let me uh, uh, in the end summarize the whole lecture in a, in a couple of minutes So we have looked at two nonlinear observers, uh, extended Kalman filter and the Thaos observer. And for both of the observers, we have looked at uh, an example uh, as well. So we started our discussion with the motivation for observer design. So motivation, of course, is that we may not be able to measure all the states in all the cases and it might be expensive so in order to reduce the cost of the system uh, we need observers and uh, that is this is the general uh, form of the output usually output is uh, some subset of states plus some measurement noise and the observer versus the uh, this is the full state feedback controller versus the dynamic compensation based controller so this is uh, we discussed the differences and the difference main difference is here that the controller is using the state estimate and here the controller is using the actual state of the system okay so linear observers we revised the Lewinberger observer and we looked at the observer dynamics every observer has same dynamics which is the copy of the system dynamics and plus some uh, correction term and the only difference between different observers is how you calculate the gain of the observer that is the only difference between um, the observers uh, otherwise the dynamics is pretty much uh, similar okay so we ignore the process and measurement noise in case of Lohenberger observer and if AC pair is observable then we can place the eigenvalues of A minus LC to the open left half plane and we have a asymptotic observer Similarly, Kalman filter, the everything is the same, but the difference is that how we calculate the gain of the observer, and we in this case we calculate the gain by solving algebraic Riccati equation, and we also know the covariance uh, matrices of the process and measurement noise, and we incorporate that into the design of the observer. And then similarly, we have extended Kalman filter, which is a very simple extension of the uh, standard Kalman filter. And its justification is that the nonlinearities are treated as process noise. And then we have the Thaos observer, and that is a little bit uh, involved, uh, more involved than the extended Kalman filter. We have a nonlinear system which has everything an LTI part and nonlinear part with output and input and a general nonlinear part which does not depend upon the input but it might depend upon the full state vector and for that system we can design the observer uh, based on two conditions first is that AC should be observable and the second condition is that F this nonlinearity should be globally Lipschitz with a finite uh, Lipschitz constant and uh, once you design the observer gain in such a way that the lambda max of this P uh, should be um, 
bounded by this inequality so there is a Lyapunov equation that we solve and find the value of the observer gain so nonlinear observer example we looked at the example of uh, extended Kalman filter um, we uh, linearized the dynamics we found the ABC matrices we uh, substituted the value of uh, you know the region where we wanted to uh, operate the system that is origin in this case and then we found the constant A and C matrices that which turned out to be observable and so we uh, plugged in the values into the re algebraic Riccati equation we solved the equation and we found the uh, observer gain okay so next we looked at the example for Tau observer and then we identified the LTI part the output input part and the nonlinear part here again this is not x1 x2 this is 0 0.2 sine of x1 and this is correct so we found the global Lipschitz constant for this system and then we uh, selected Q equal identity matrix and we found this condition from the Thau's theorem or the condition for Thau's observer was translated into this condition on the eigenvalue of the P matrix and then we uh, plugged in the values into the Lyapunov equation and we found uh, that by choosing L1 and L2 in such a uh, L1 equal 3 and L2 equal 1 we satisfy the condition for the Tau observer and so this becomes the observer gain we implement this observer gain on a very simplistic uh, type of linear controller applied to the nonlinear system and we see the uh, observer working well the uh, estimates converging to the actual state values and but there was a steady state error with this controller so which uh, does not bother us at this point because we are not studying how to uh, do reference tracking for nonlinear systems um, so in this case we can basically remove steady state error with the integral part uh, in the controller so that is the end of the lecture hope you were able to understand uh, the concepts if not uh, 